I am Ellen Ruth Rose, Earplay Violist, and I'm joined by composer Pablo Ortiz, and we're here to provide a companion discussion to Earplay's April 2021 First Monday program, which features Le Vrai Dango Argentin for solo viola by Pablo Ortiz. Since around uh, the early 90s, 1991, I started composing, you know, a series of pieces that were, um, you know, like in tango inflected or um, uh, informed by the idea or, or the memory of, of tango. And so they, they became um, less abstract as, you know, um, as I wrote more and more of them. And they became less and less abstract and more and more like tango-esque um, as, 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 you know, as time went by. So when I was specifically growing up, let's say my, my teens, uh, I didn't listen to tango. I just listened to rock and roll and all kinds of rock and roll, Argentinian rock and roll, British, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, yes, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I, I listened to um american american rock uh all, all the bands um that were somewhat relevant of course the beatles and the stones and all of that so um i would have missed the tango entirely if, if, if it had not been for uh, fortuitous facts which is that one of my uncles divorced and he he came to live with us in my parents' house, and he brought with with him his uh, collection of tango records. It was a significant collection, and he would listen to these tangos on, on the uh, you know the stereo in those days. You know, we had like a good equipment, and I, in the afternoons, and I was there, and I listened with him. I really liked my uncle very much. Uh, and, you know, through that, I became familiar with tangos that were from way, way before my time, you know, not so much with Piazzolla. Piazzolla came like, later. Like Carlos Gardel or something? Gardel, yeah, Gardel and, you know, Troilo and the great bands from, from the 40s and the 50s that were kind of pre-Piazzolla, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I have, um, for my age, you know, an, an unusual um, uh, exposure to a certain repertoire that I shouldn't have been exposed to if it were not for the fact that my, my uncle got divorced. Well, what I feel on this piece, I mean, as a someone who's played, I mean, a lot, a lot of different styles of music and um, has grappled with the kind of pleasures and challenges of playing solos that there are, you know, a number of different types. Um, some are, they're so kind of enchanted or entranced with their own technical craft that you can almost just get through the sort of technical challenges and, and, and feel that that's the point of the piece. And um, this piece is, um, and then there are other pieces which are so wedded to their form that you get the feeling that there's some kind of objective ideal of how the performer should play this, how this piece should ideally sound. And your piece, Le Vrai Ton Argentin, fits into that sweet spot where there's a, a fair amount of form and there's there are some technical challenges although they are while the piece is idiomatic the challenges are getting the various colors and gestures to speak they're not higher louder faster kind of challenges they're yeah. they're a musician's challenge but what i found looking back in your piece again there's all these little clues about how things shift you've got this opening declamation right and you, it starts with a c and then it goes to a c sharp and a c so already we're saying there's this tension and then you get this little kind of bony ponticello section where i'm playing right up to the bridge so you get all these high partials and you don't get that sound until the beginning of the again until the beginning of the end of the piece after we've done our big dramatic um moments and one of them you've even said like a ver like verity verity esque you get this dramatic thing and then it winds down and the last thing you do before i would call the coda of the piece is this little ponticello chord hmm. 
And then it goes back you know, into the dance form. So there's little things like that, or just that for me um, allows a performer to have kind of an unconscious connection between one thing and the next.